What's up, sports fans, and welcome to the Sports Opinions Podcast. I am your host, Alex Cuesta. And with me is, I want to stress, a lot lately we've been hearing um, more guys that kind of are in sports media, but this whole thing that I started was started because I wanted to give anyone and everyone a chance to talk about sports. Didn't matter if you were a journalist, media person, or just a big mega fan of a team. I wanted to give you a chance. And right now is a buddy of mine who happens to be the latter. He's just a big fan. He's a Texas dude. He's a fan of the Spurs. He's a fan of the Cowboys. I don't know if that's going to put a bad uh, taste in people's mouths right away. But he's my buddy, Kenny Martinez. What's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, Alex? Uh, Not much here. Um, Yeah, so thanks for bringing me on. And I'm ready to kind of get down down to business. Hell yeah. Um, On social media, you have any plugs you want to give anybody? Uh, yeah, I actually do have my Twitch that I have com- kind of coming up. It's uh, twitch.com slash chaoticmind1013. Um, just casual gamer, just get myself out there like always, like everybody else. I mean, that's about it, guys. Nice. Uh, what games do you kind of play out there? Because I'm a big supporter of esports and even Twitch because my brother did it for a little. A guy I had on, the site expert of the Jet Press, Louis Toronto Jr., also has a Twitch account. We talked about it. So what do you play mostly on Twitch? Uh, right now, I'm kind of just grinding out some Fortnite. I got Destiny 2 going for a while, and then um, just like re- your regular role-play game, like Resident Evil right now, too. Kind of just toying around with that one, but mainly a Fortnite and Destiny 2. Resident Evil's awesome. Now, how do you like in the new season of Fortnite? Is it uh, how the patch work and everything stumpy and glitchy? Yeah, I mean, it, it works out. I mean, it's just it's a lot of different changes kind of going through the game. So, I mean, um, if, you, if anyone's kind of played the previous seasons, I mean, it all kind of changes like theme-wise. So, like, Last time it was Halloween stuff, so I mean, there's a bunch of zombies, and now it's all like planes and just avalanches and just snow and just big terrain change. So it's nice, kind of, kind of get everything out there. I still love the balloon kills. Oh when yeah, you fly sure. around on balloons and just snipe people. My, one of my buddies I work with, um, he's uh, he's on Twitch now. He's uh, the Kill Zone, and he just does some of the sickest snipe kills, and he just loves going on balloons and just confusing everyone because they have no idea where it's coming from. Yeah, uh, I'll like uh, hop on the planes and just kind of hold dynamite until we get close to people and just start dropping them on people. So you're a troll. So you're another, I, think, I feel like every gamer is a troll. I don't care if it's Fortnite, if it's sports games, every single gamer is a troll in some way. Started with Halo, man. That's where it started at. Oh, jumping, the jumping. I can't stand that in Halo. It's so dumb. But we are going to go back to what we're supposed to be on, and that's sports. Love getting off it. on these tangents, but... Like I mentioned, you are a massive Spurs fan. Yep, huge. Nobody talks more mess than you about the Spurs. Nope. Um, how are you feeling right now? Because right now, the Spurs are not your daddy's Spurs. They are sitting at 16 and 15. They're outside the playoff home right now. They still have arguably the best coach of all time and Greg Popovich there. But it's a really different makeup. You lost a top three player in the game in Kawhi Leonard. DeMar DeRozan's come over. You kind of have a hodgepodge of older dudes. Uh, what's your feeling on the team right now? Uh, I mean, it's a rough start, obviously. I mean, you know, we don't want to see our teams kind of starting off like this, especially in the years that we've had. But, I mean, you know, just kind of grinding it out. I mean, we've had our good games and our bad. I mean, we've already got the Lakers 3-1 and one right now. So, I mean, I know they're not really big of a team, but they still have LeBron James. Any team with LeBron is going to be a good team regardless. Um, yeah, any team with LeBron's really good. That I, we, I'm a Nets fan, and we actually just beat them last night. That is like yeah. the Nets oh, are winning, the Nets, Nets won six in a row. They're the real deal, man. That block on LeBron just dunk last night. That was a uh, that was pretty good. I liked it. It was fun. I jumped out of my chair. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, just speaking on DeRosa too. I mean, you know, he might not be a top three player, but I mean, he's definitely top ten or top like top twelve at least, most definitely. I mean, he has his games. He's had his struggles adjusting to the system, but I mean, you know, just. We, we're still kind of early in the season. I mean, once, you know, this new, this new year kind of kicks off, I mean, I'm pretty sure things are going to start turning around and, you know, looking for the better too. That way we can kind of get ourselves back in that playoff seat because we've already gone uh, at least like 10 to over 10 years or with being in the playoffs. Yeah. It's a so, literal, it's a literal decade that you guys. Yeah. Now, one thing I looked, I'm looking at the Rosen stats. He's getting his points, 23 and a half points a game. That's not surprising anybody. What surprises me is he has 6.2 assists per game, and I don't think he's ever had to kind of go in that distributor role, and especially on the Spurs where you've always had Tony Parker. You've always had, um, you know, I feel like Patty Mills has been a guy that has stepped up. He's not really doing that this year. Where can they find more assists from? Do you think they need to make a trade for a point guard? Because I feel like a guy like DeRozan is kind of being wasted 
if you're having him run the offense. No, I didn't, I don't think we need to pick up another point guard. I think we just got hit with some with like a real bad bump in the road at the beginning of the season. I mean, we lost what two two point guards. I mean, I think we lost um, Jamar Murray and then we lost Lonnie Walker. <clears throat> yep. So I mean, we're already starting off the season bad with both of our point guards. Um, but I mean, I don't think we need to pick up one. I th- think we just kind of like kind of ride it out. Like Pop Pop himself doesn't like to make these big changes or make these trades that when unless he needs to. So I mean, if he sees that we're that we're still struggling, I mean, but I'm sure that he'll find a way to go around it and, you know, make the system work too. You know, Corey Joseph, um, Burn, um, Burn's also playing one heck of a season this year. I mean, he's been really clutch for us in like the late games too. So, I mean, it's also a good, a good person we have too that can handle the ball. Without a doubt. Now, the only thing that concerns me is we saw it in Houston when Harden had to play the point guard role. He still got his points. And he was averaging a double-double, near triple-double. But it really did take away from late game because he was doing so much that the closer wasn't able to really come out in him. And he, for the longest time, and I still think, is kind of soft when it comes to closing it out. He's not – if he doesn't get that call, that touch call on the drive, he's not really looking to finish if it's a real physical play. Have you seen anything – it's early in the season, but have you seen anything where – doing so much more has kind of affected DeRozan and his motor late in games? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I mean, not even him, but I mean, Rudy Gay too. I mean, you know, if either of them start getting in their groove early and they'll just pick it back up after halftime, they'll feel comfortable with it. I mean, you know, there's been a couple of games where DeRozan hasn't been as the guy that we needed to him, needed him to be. But I mean, we also, like, we're, the Spurs is such a team play, a, a team-based team or it's pass the ball first before you shoot, before you're hogging, before showboating or anything like that. So, I mean, if one of them's not going, I mean, I'm sure that we can get someone else to kind of step up too and help them out, make them start getting warm, start getting heated up, and start making their shots too. Now, I'm really surprised at just the fact that you guys are sitting at 16 and 15. I know the West is a beast of a conference. That's not a secret. But you have two of the more skilled bigs in LaMarcus Aldridge and Pau Gasol, especially in terms of – moving the ball around, finding the right shot, and, you know, making the right play at the right time. Um, Aldridge is having a pretty good year. He's near 20 points a game. Pau Gasol is kind of – he hasn't played. He, uh, he's gotten – did he get hurt? Am I, uh, or has he just kind of been a coach's scratch? Um, I mean, I don't think that he's hurt. I mean, he might just be a coach's scratch at this point. I mean, we've been also been playing a lot of the younger guys too. I mean, he's probably just saving Powell for later in the season. I mean – Powell does have his experience with the playoffs and with winning championships. He's proven that with Kobe and the Lakers. So, I mean, he's definitely someone that we can rely on and kind of like lean on that who would assist us in, you know, in situations like that too. So how uncomfortable does it make you kind of feel at this point? Cause you've been spoiled. You went yeah. from David Robinson, the Admiral, and then they draft this string bean seven foot kid in uh, Tim Duncan. He ends up being one of the most dominant big men of all time you get Tony Parker you have Manu then you get Kawhi the late the Spurs have had a bevy of just unbelievable talent come through that has helped them sustain this 10-year ridiculous drive with championships and stuff like that and now you guys are in kind of a mini rebuild in territory I think a lot of San Antonio fans especially young ones aren't used to is it a little uncomfortable watching games now not with the same confidence that you used to have like you know we might have an off night, but we're going to get the next five. I mean, uh, I can feel the the lack in confidence slightly. But, I mean, again, I mean, I've grown up here in town in San Antonio since I was a kid. So, I mean, I've seen all the championships that we've ever won. And, I mean, it's good to see that we've, that we've accomplished so much in, the, in, like, such a period of time with such great players. But I also mean just the support that they get from us here in town. I mean, it's – beyond phenomenal we can lose seven games and come back and win you know by 30 or by like five in such a close game and I mean they'll just go crazy I mean because that's just how much support that they have I mean I don't think without a doubt I mean that my confidence lacks that much but because I mean we've been in situations like this too and we're definitely going to come back and I mean that's what I that's what I think just because I mean I've seen it done and you know we might have a new squad might have crazy new players and people have never been in our system before and I mean it'll just all turn itself out it'll work itself out and everyone to come together and start playing as a team how they should man i wish i had that confidence that you have (laughs) all my teams suck besides the yankees 
That's that. Hey, I mean, the Yankees had their had their time. I mean, they're on a slump right now too. I mean, they, there's no slump. They won a hundred games, and they're one of the best teams in baseball. Get out of here. All right. I don't want to hear that. But I have a question. Have you been forcing Melissa to go to any Spurs games? No, not yet. Um, just she not, will not be yet. so bored. She is not interested in that no. at all. <laughs> she would not be. I think Brooke and I would probably have more fun at a Spurs game. But you guys have supported the hell out of me, and I really appreciate that. I know Melissa has no interest in sports, and she's still there. I love that. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Thanks, man. And, I mean, we wouldn't be here if we didn't know you. So, I mean, we're just going to keep supporting you as best as we can. Uh, It's people like you that keep this podcast going. Uh, Last thing, with the confidence, do you think the Spurs are going to make the playoffs? Are they going to make a run and get in? Uh, you know, we might make a run and get in. I mean, if, if anything, we'll probably come up pretty short. Um, I think at least eighth or seventh right now. I mean, the Kings have been looking amazing this year. I mean, I haven't seen the Kings play like this in, since, I don't know, I think it was in, like, in high school or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah since the Doug Christie, Mike Bibby days. Yeah, and I mean, Chris Webby too. I mean, they though, that team there was like great. And I mean, just seeing this this young team kind of come back together and you know, actually perform how they are. They're top eight right now, which is good. I mean, I'm not saying that they could do better, but I mean, just seeing where everyone else stands, you got Nuggets, Warriors, Thunder, Lakers, and Blazers up top. I mean, those are pretty five dominant teams already. I mean, Nuggets are surprising me up there, you know, ranked number one in the West and, you know, above the Warriors might be a fight a game, but I mean, they're still, they're still outperforming the Warriors. And I mean, that's great. I mean, just for that team too. I mean, they haven't been doing so well since Melo was there. I mean, and even then, you know, he was, He's not even playing anymore. <laughs> he's the Rockets previously and not no more. Yeah, he's probably going to end up in L.A. That's where all the rumors is that he's going to be a Laker. So, which I think will be okay with him because I think he'll he'll definitely understand he's not the alpha on that team and he won't be able to spout off with James there. Oh, no. He'll put him in his place real quick. Now, you gave a great segue into our general NBA talk because you're just that type of guest who's going to make awesome segues and I won't have to do my job, which makes it oh, even yeah. better. But you talked about the Warriors. You talked about how the Nuggets are up top right now. Can you see anyone in not even just the West, in the NBA, really challenging the Warriors for the title this year? Uh, I mean, I would say, you know, the the Raptors, just because, I mean, they did pick up Kawhi from us. Kawhi is not really that much like of a strong leader, but he is a very, very dominant player. Um, I mean, I, just from looking on the Eastern Conference, I mean, I don't – the Raptors and the Bucks probably give probably go first and second before they go to the finals. You know, I wish the Celtics were playing a lot better. You know, I wish they'd be up there, but I mean, they're still, you know, performing really well, you know, sitting at fifth, they're 18 and 11. So, I mean, it's really not bad, way better than what we're doing right now here in San Antonio. <laughs> but I mean, as far as, you know, is anyone giving the Warriors like a really good competition, you know, maybe the Thunder, I mean, Thunder's always give, always has good games with the Warriors too. I mean, the whole Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook kind of feud, I mean, just them two when they go at it. I mean, you can just tell like their intensity is in focus is just like on competing against each other. Yeah, it's great. I I have been a Warriors like fan. They've been my second team for a long time. Uh, yeah. ever since the Jason Richardson days and just watching them dunk on everyone. So I've seen the awful Warriors. Yeah. And now I'm experiencing the fun Warriors. And I just have to say there's no one. Probably no one. They're gonna get Boogie Cousins back uh, at some point. He's practicing now. Uh, at least like doing rehab stuff and he doesn't have to be the dominant boogie cousins to help them secure another championship no problem Uh, it's gonna be unfair probably and yeah the only i don't know in the west uh, the only team i can see giving them a problem is possibly the lakers just because of lebron the lebron factor where he just upsets everything besides that i really don't see anyone in the west challenging them and you mentioned a few teams in the East. We're going to talk a little bit more about the East in a second, but I really can't see anyone out of the East giving them a challenge either. Yeah, I mean they're they're just I mean they're just really really dominant. And I mean once like one of them gets hot, the other one they just all start picking up off each other. It, it, that's all it really is. And I mean they're all just great shooters. I mean you have the Splash Brothers, and then you have you throw in Kevin Durant. Yeah, and it's not Montgomery. even just it's not even just the shooting too. Like especially like yeah, when they're messing around during the regular season, they'll throw up fifty, sixty threes. Like they don't care. No. Nope. When it comes to the playoffs and it comes to a real contest, the ball movement, the basketball IQ, uh, the way that they can just sense when they need to buckle down on defense, sense when they need to make that pressure turnover, 
they just all think is a cohesive unit. And as much as I don't mind Steve Kerr, I really don't think he has that much to do with it because I think that those the basketball IQ of guys like Draymond, who I'm not a huge fan of, but he is a good basketball player. Clay Thompson is one of my favorite players in the game. They have Andre Iguodala, who's unbelievably under, underrated on that team. Yeah, he really is. He is the Monte Ginobili of the Warriors. He did get a finals MVP, which was deserved, but yeah. just all throughout the regular season, he just – Locks on to the toughest guy. Like he's gonna play LeBron probably in the Western Conference Finals. I think the Lakers will get there, and he's just gonna lock down on LeBron and hold LeBron and not stop LeBron, but just be pesky enough that he doesn't win the game on his own. And yeah. it's just they play as such a cohesive unit. The Warriors are just fun to watch when they're firing on all cylinders. It's very true. I mean, they're very quick. I mean, they're they just play quick basketball. I mean, there's hardly a moment when they're slowing down. Yeah. All right. I have to ask you a quick question, um, completely off of what we're going to talk about next. But I read an article. I actually put a blast out on Facebook, kind of aggregating it. A lot of teams are starting to use different type of markings on their practice courts. They, in the article, they mentioned the Atlanta Hawks. They mentioned the 76ers. They mentioned my Brooklyn Nets. Are using a four-point line in practice to try and extend guys' range. We already see it affecting the game with Curry because Curry is kind of unguardable. He'll he'll pull up from anywhere. Trey Young has that kind of trigger. How do you think that's going to affect the way the NBA is played if guys are legitimately stepping five feet back and shooting threes comfortably? I mean, it could change it, you know, just in the way someone would have to play defense. And scoring-wise, I don't think that they'll change it and add a four-point line. I think that just gives that player the ability to – you know, play that aggressive too. If they are feeling that confident where they can just take that shot and make it and without any stress or, you know, any pressure at all, I mean, then, I mean, that just puts more pressure on the actual defender where, I mean, you know, I have to step up and actually guard this person, you know, way off the actual three-point line instead of having that cushion. But Kenny, they're not allowed to defend anymore. Hand-checking is gone. You can barely put your body into a guy that's driving. If the driver initiates contact and you're in great position, they still call a blocking foul. I just... Uh, for me, it's like every other sport where they're doing everything they possibly can to make scoring better and nothing else because I, I don't know. I, I'm i not a fan of the current – I love NBA. I love watching basketball. I'm just not a fan of the way that they call the game right now. It's kind of – it's very soft, and I'm not a fan of it in the terms of, like I said, how they call the game. And I think that the expansion there where guys are now going to have to start guarding guys – from the half court legitimately is just going to cause a lot more fouls. And we already see scores in the one twenties on the regular right now, which is insane. So what do you feel about like the defense right now? Are you a fan of the way it's being officiated? Uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, yes, just because, I mean, it gives, I mean, the ball never lies whenever you're playing. I mean, it really, really doesn't. I mean, you can take a shot. You with the old coaches adage. I love it. I mean, it's it's true, though. I mean, you know, it, it always happens. You always see it. And, I mean, you really don't think about it. You know, can something can happen in the game. I mean, someone gets a foul. And, I mean, you go down the court and, I mean, you know, like, oh, that should have been a shot. If you make it, I mean, just it doesn't lie. I mean, if it's supposed to happen, it's going to happen. And, I mean, the way that they're calling the fouls, though, I mean, it they could lighten up a bit. And, I mean, just give everyone not some slack, but, I mean, just not be so stressful or not be so hard on the rules as they should or as they're meaning to be. I mean, maybe they're trying to, like, put in everybody's head, yes, next season or, you know, coming up, we're going to be, like, on you, like, nobody's like nobody's business and on point, like, 100% of the time. But, I mean, maybe it's just that message that they're trying to send. I mean, who knows if, like, next season they'll lighten up and they'll just kind of um, relax a little bit. I mean, I know in the NFL I've seen a couple of, you know, helmet-to-helmet helmet contacts, no flex called, but, I mean, you know, it's just part of the game. Definitely. You know, I, I need to have you on more often. You're just like a wise, calming voice. I really like it. You have a, you have a nice little tone to you, and you're just so wise. Got that radio voice, man. <laughs> you really do. I think you need to take over hosting this, man. Like, seriously. <laughs> but we're going to jump into East real quick. Um, my Nets are doing their thing, but they're still not a threat. So we're going to talk about some of the threats in the East. You talked about the Raptors. They have Kawhi. They still have Kyle Lowry. They're a dangerous team. Um, the Celtics, and they're underperforming. But I want to talk about the Bucks because the Greek freak, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, uh, they're doing their thing. And I think that they are going to be ultimately the team that comes out of the East. I think they're legit. I think Greek freak is a legit MVP candidate. 
Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the Bucks? Do you think that they have what it takes to beat the Raptors? You, that could be a real good six or seven games. I mean, it easy. I mean, there's no way that either team would get swept or or just lose two games. I, I really don't think so. I mean, that'll be a really good series to see. Um, I'm actually really wanting to see the, the Sixers go a little further than just the first round. I mean, that'd be pretty good to see. I haven't seen that in a while. Um, you know, Jimmy Butler's been on fire this whole season. You know, he had a little – yeah, little stuff going on at the beginning of the season. But, I mean, you know, putting him with the Sixers, I mean, he has um, J.J. Redick. I mean, he's, an, he's, not a, he's not a bad player, but he's not a great player. I mean, he's one of those all-around players that can play pretty much everything. Except, yeah, he's I mean, got he's pretty, Simmons. He's got Embiid there. He's got weapons yeah, he can work with. Absolutely. And, I mean, I, I feel like that team would, would give the Raptors and the Bucks both a run for their money, too. It's just funny at the beginning, the hype with the Celtics this year and now how oh, yeah. it's kind of, you know, they did just win like eight straight though. Like, and then they lost, but it's like, it's wild how just it's fizzled because we haven't seen that high level of play and that dominance that we were expecting. Yeah. And I really mean, when, situation. when they got everyone, you know, they, they had um, Gordon, they had Kyrie Irving, you know, the season just started. We knew that it was going to be a great season. And then just one thing after another trickles down. And I mean, they just got put into a real bad slump. And, I mean, just we're hoping, you know, as fans to see them bounce back and be, be that number one team that they should be because that's how they play. I mean, you know, that's how we've seen them play in the past. You know, we've seen Gordon play like that. We've seen Kyrie Irving play like that. And, I mean, that that's just the, the team that should be dominating right now. You know, it should be Kenny, them and the Raptors. Maybe out in Texas, you're, you want to see them dominate. In the Northeast, New York, New Jersey guy. No. I am very tired of seeing Boston do things well. <laughs> no, I can, can imagine so, yeah. I mean, y'all need the Knicks to do something too. I mean, they haven't done anything in so long. I don't want the Knicks to do anything either. I'm a Nets fan. The Knicks can go away too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any of them to play well. No one, no one, no one near me, even the Sixers. Uh, no, I'm not going to lie now. I like the Sixers. Uh, the Sixers aren't a threat in terms of fandom. but No, they're not. But, I mean, team-wise, I mean, basketball-wise, they, they're playing really solid basketball. They are. They are. All right. So we're going to jump ship. You talked about the NFL. I want to get your opinion on a few things about the NFL. First things first, yesterday, Pro Bowl selections were announced. I'm going to give a quick rundown of the teams real quick, just because why not? AFC quarterbacks, Patty Mahomes is the starter. Phillip Rivers and Tom Brady are the backups. Running back, James Conner for the Steelers is a starter. Melvin Gordon, Phillip Lindsley, who's a rookie, are the backups. Fullback, Anthony Sherman of the Chiefs is there. I don't know why they have fullback there at all. Wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyree Kill, the starters, Antonio Brown, Keenan Allen, backups. Tight end, Travis Kelsey, Eric Ebron, Kelsey's a starter. Um, tackles, Taylor Luan and Villanueva for the Steelers are the starters. Eric Fisher, backup. David DeCastro, Marshall Yonda are the offensive guards. Quentin Nelson, the backup. Both Pouncey boys made it in as the centers with Marquise from the Steelers getting the nod. Um, defensive Watt and Miles Garrett are the defensive ends. Melvin Ingram got in there. Um, Gino Atkins and Jarrell Casey are the starters for interior linemen. Cameron Hayward is there as well. Outside linebacker Von Miller, Jadavion Clowney for the Texans there. D Ford for the Chiefs. Inside CJ Mosley, McKinney. Um, corner, Xavier Howard, Jalen Ramsey are starting. Stephen Gilmore. And Denzel Ward are backups. Free safety, Derwin James, rookie for the Chargers. Eric Weddle for the Ravens. Strong safety, my Jets, Jamal Adams. Kicker, my Jets, Jason Myers. No long snappers so far. Brett Kern, the punter. Return specialist from my Jets, Andre Roberts. And special teamer, Adrian Phillips. Out of the AFC, do you have a problem with any of the guys that got in? Absolutely not. I mean, they've all been playing pretty good. And, I mean, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be picked, I mean, if they – wouldn't have like been performing the way they have. I mean, there's really, I mean, I'm surprised that Cleveland got some people up there just because, I mean, they've been playing a lot better this year than they have in the past. And I mean, the Packers are not the Packers that they used to be. Yeah. You mean for me, we're going to go over the NFC too, but I just hate the Pro Bowl. I'm not going to lie. It's a popularity contest. I hate the fact that fans pick every player. Because fans don't know what the hell they're talking about most of the time. And I know it's a contradiction to my show because my show is sports opinions. It's for the fans. It's to have fans, media, everyone, anyone come on. You're just a fan. I'm not saying you don't know what you're talking about. But in terms of picking, 
it's not necessarily picking your favorite, the best player. It's picking your favorite player, your team, the player on your team that you want to get in. And I think that kind of sucks. Yeah, and I mean, NBA they had that had that for a while too. I mean, where it was just you know you just get votes on. I mean, Kobe Bryant when was number one for quite some time. And, and I, I mean, yeah, a lot of leagues are doing it where fans will choose. I think in football, fans should choose like four players: one offense, one defense for each conference. And it should be coaches, former players, former coaches that choose the rest of the team. All that. I don't think the fans should have control of every single player at all, or most of the players. Yeah, and I mean, I have to, I have to side with you a lot more on not liking the Pro Bowl as much, just because I mean, they're they're making football a lot softer than what it was. And I it's mean, such I, a trash game. I understand why, just because they want to. They're very concerned about player safety, and I mean, I would be too if I was, you know, in the NFL, getting hit in the head all the time. You know, concussion after concussion. I get it. Do you I remember? Mean, I think it was a Pro Bowl in like '96 before Sean Taylor passed away. He was in the Pro Bowl. And he's had a wide receiver going across the middle. I forget who it was. Thought he was going to get a free pass. It was a Pro Bowl. And he lit him the hell up. And that was my favorite Pro Bowl moment ever because he was like, nope, I'm here to play. I'm here to play football. So don't come across the middle and unguard yourself. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and, I mean, that's what the Pro Bowl should. I mean, should be. I mean, it should be, you know, fast action pace. I mean, you know, big hits. I mean, that's what we want to see. That's what fans, you know, you know, that's why we watch football because, I mean, big hits, scoring. You know, your favorite team, your favorite players, you know, the when amazing happens, you know, when just go down and like, what was it? The Seattle Seahawks when Marshawn Lynch were just pounding the Patriots, pounding them, pounding them, pounding them, pounding them. And you then know, they passed. Last play, yeah, last play, you expect them to run the ball, just run it down their throat. And yeah. I mean, you never know. And what happened? They picked it off, pick six down the road. Yeah, it, it, that was a ridiculous moment. And yeah, I don't know. The, the Pro Bowl just puts a bad taste in my mouth. But we're going to run through the NFC real quick. And if you have a problem with anyone, we'll find out. Quarterback Drew Brees is the starter. Jared Goff, Aaron Rodgers are the backups. I already have a problem there. I don't know what the hell Aaron Rodgers is doing there. Me neither. Uh, running back Todd Gurley starter. Saquon and Zeke are in there. I like that whole entire group. True. Fullback Kyle Juzewicz. I don't know if I said his name right, but he's a fullback. Who cares? Wide receiver Julio Jones, Michael Thomas starting. Adam Thielen, Devontae Adams are backups. Again, what the hell is Adams doing there? This is a popularity contest. Tight end Zach Ertz and Greg Kittle with Ertz as the starter. Offensive tackle Tyron Smith, Taron Armstead, and Trent Williams is the backup. I know you're a Cowboys fan, but why is Tyron Smith there? He has been absolutely terrible on the line this year. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, and yeah. I, support, I support the Cowboys. My wife is a big Cowboys fan. She is. Tyron Smith has been bad. <laughs> I don't get that. But uh, offensive guard, Zach Martin, Brandon Brooks are the starters. Trey Turner is the backup. I agree with Martin. Martin's a beast. Yeah. Center, Alex Mack from the Falcons. Max Unger is the backup. Defensive end, Cameron Jordan, Demarcus Lawrence, and Danielle Hunter. Jordan and Lawrence are starters. Interior lineman, Aaron Donald, Fletcher Cox are starters. Akeem Hicks is the backup. Outside linebacker, Khalil Mack and Ryan Kerrigan starters. Anthony Barr is the backup. Inside linebacker, Luke Keekley starter, Bobby Wagner backup. Corners, Kyle Fuller, Patrick Peterson, Darius Slay, Byron Jones. Fuller and Peterson are the starters. I really love that they included Jones in there. I think he deserves it this year. Yeah, he's been doing really good. Free safety, Eddie Jackson starting, Harrison Smith backup. Strong safety, Landon Collins of the Giants. Kicker, um, Aldrich Rosas, Giants. Long snapper to be announced, punter, Michael Dickerson. Return specialist, Tariq Cohen. And special teamer, Corey Littleton, do you have a problem? We mentioned some of the problems. Do you have a problem with anyone else that I didn't mention? No. I mean, everything seems to be looking okay so far. I mean, I'm glad I see some of these names on here. I mean, some of them I'm just kind of just scratching my head a little bit. But, I mean, again, I mean, it's the Pro Bowl is the Pro Bowl. I mean, you're not going to see much of anything here. I mean, that's just my opinion, though. Yeah, no. Now, I want to talk about some snubs because there were some notable names that aren't on there. Christian McCaffrey who is having a hell of a year. I understand Todd Gurley, Saquon, and Zeke got in. But I think Christian McCaffrey could probably replace Saquon in there. Uh, I think he's having an unbelievable year. You could have made him a wide receiver, too. He does it all. Juju Smith-Schuster didn't make it as a receiver. I think that's egregious. He's having a better season than A.B. Alvin Kamara could have made that team. I think this is the biggest one that you're going to jump on. Why the hell wasn't Leighton Van Der Esch in there? 
Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I, I think know. he might be rookie of the year. In my eyes, I have him as rookie of the year. Ahead of Derwin James. I could definitely see that. Oh my God, he's been a monster. But you know, and that's that's the issue is the snubs. The snubs to me always make it also kind of blah. I think they should do I like what the NBA does with the futures game and the regular game. I think we should have a futures game, a freshman sophomore type of game. Yeah. I feel like I mean, that would be fun. That would be I mean, I feel like that would be more entertaining than the actual Pro Bowl itself. I feel like those guys would actually try. They would. I mean, it's they it would be just like the the freshman sophomore for the NBA All Stars, and I mean, they they obviously put up numbers. And I mean, I'm sure that the, if they were to do a first and second year, you know, teams, you know, that would that would probably bring a, bring a lot more viewers than the Pro Bowl. Could itself. you imagine Patty Mahomes on one side and Baker Mayfield on the other with some of the best rookies and sophomores playing around them? That yeah. would just be a blast. It, it really would. I mean, it would just be. Uh, it, it, like I mentioned, it would just compare it to the NBA. I mean, it would be really highlight a lot of highlights, and I mean, I feel like it would bring a lot more viewers in than the actual Pro Bowl itself, without a doubt. So, speaking of football, speaking of a lot of guys we mentioned, front runners for the MVP right now: Patrick Mahomes, Drew Brees. I think Drew Brees kind of played his way out. I like Andrew Luck up there. I think he belongs up there. Tom Brady's always up there. Who's your current MVP right now? I hate to say, man, but I I feel like uh, Drew Brees has been pretty on point. I mean, he's he's been he's always been you know a phenomenal quarterback. I mean, since they won, and I mean even before that too. I mean, he's just been a really fantastic player this this year alone. I mean, he's been doing you know at least the most in my in my opinion. I mean, he got they got beat by us, but I mean it really wasn't you know that big of a win. I mean, a win's a win, but it just wasn't something to you know boast about, I guess. But I mean. I could really see him winning the MVP. I mean, I'm not sure who else you have or who you might want to go ahead and see and win instead. I mean, but I, I would probably go with Drew Brees itself. See, I'm going to go outside the box. I'm not going with any of the guys I mentioned. I think quarterbacks get way too much damn love. <laughs> I, I really would personally like to see Aaron Donald win it. He's an interior lineman. He's been the best player in football this year. He has 16 and a half sacks from the interior for force fumbles. I don't think there has been a more disruptive guy. The guy could have 20 sacks by the end of by, in the next two games. And he is a big reason why the Rams are as good as they are. His sacks are timely and they're always seeming to make a big play there. I, my vote would go to Aaron Donald over any of those guys. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, the Rams are doing fabulous too. I mean, they're, they've been, they're at least top notch this year, better than by the past years I've seen them. I mean, again, I mean, we'll see who it comes down to between Drew Brees and, and him. Yeah, I think I honestly think it's going to be Patrick Mahomes just because of the shock value and because he's entertaining. And I'm not knocking Mahomes. I know a lot of people, if you listen to this, it sounds like I knock Mahomes a lot. I just, I still don't drink the Mahomes Kool Aid. I think he's having an amazing year, he's having a record setting year. You got to do it for two or three years in order for me to get behind you. That's why I didn't get behind RG3 after his rookie year. And it, lo, lo and behold, where's RG3 now? So you got to do it for two or three years for me to get behind you completely. That's just my rule. How do you feel about uh, Andrew Luck being one of the people that's being, you know, as one of the odds for the NFL MVP? He's already the comeback player of the year. Him or Watson, they're both right up there. But yeah, Andrew Luck is having an MVP type year. He's well over forty five hundred yards. I already think so. He has thirty four touchdowns. He brought a extremely bad Colts team into playoff contention and might get that wild card. I think Andrew Luck deserves to have his name up there a hundred percent. Yeah, I can't agree more. All right. So last thing on just general NFL, and then we're going to talk about your Cowboys. Do you think the Patriots are in trouble? They lost two straight. They look like they're in disarray. What is your pulse on the Pats? Pats are Pats. I mean, Tom Brady's going to go ahead and show and show everyone who he really is. I mean, this next in these last few weeks, um, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Just because, I mean, he's the goat. I mean, there's there's really nobody else in the in the league right now that can play up to his level. That I, in my opinion, at least, I mean. He's just a very calm person in the pocket. He knows exactly what should, he should look for and what, where to throw the ball, what to do. I mean, given the time, I mean, he can do pretty much anything. I can't agree itself. with you more. Can't agree with you more. And I hate to admit it since I'm a Jets fan, I absolutely hate the Pats and Tom Brady. But the only, the only person or only people 
that are freaking out are anyone that aren't the Pats. The Pats are okay. They they have weathered worse storms, and they're just going to be the Pats. And, like, I agree with you. They might not get the first round by, and I think they're okay with that. They know that once they get into the playoffs, they have a chance to go to the Super Bowl every single year. They And they really, really do. I mean, you know, they – Say it's all the coach, but I mean, it's it's really just Tom Brady just being Tom Brady, and knowing knowing what to do. He's been so resilient, and I mean, just savage since he started playing. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm done talking about Tom Brady. I hate praising that guy. All right. We'll throw that one in the bag. Yeah, he he's a jerk, but uh, <laughs> perfect life. I can't stand that man. But we're gonna talk about your Cowboys, who look like absolute garbage this past week, but. Previous to this past week, they look like a legitimate contender. Are you nervous after they were shut out by MVP candidate Andrew Luck and the Colts? Uh, nervous? No. You kind of upset about it and kind of just dis- distraught. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was a really tough loss. I mean, we could we feel like we could have done a lot more, and I mean, we didn't. So I mean, it just kind of puts me as a fan perspective. It just in a slump. But I mean, you know, seeing where we are right now, still top in the in the in the in our division, but I mean, I feel like we could still kind of get the ball rolling. We play Tampa next. I mean, that should be, you know, pretty good game. We should feel like we should get, we could get the dub in that game too. Yeah, you definitely could. Now you're in a scenario where if the, you guys lose out both of your games, then either the skins <clears throat> or the Eagles can jump you and they can take the helm as the champion where you guys kind of control your own destiny right now. How confident are you that they're going to be able to finish this game off, this season off with a division championship? I'm pretty confident about it. Um, you know, with the, I mean, us as fans, I mean, with the Cowboys and their history, I mean, we get in our heads a lot because, I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. what we do. Because, I mean, <laughs> the given given the history with the Cowboys in these past couple of years, I mean, you know, it's just that's how they play. I mean, they'll win, 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 and then loss and then oh there it goes so, Car- I mean, yeah, cowboys yeah so i mean it, it just i mean right now i mean just got to keep our heads up and kind of just keep like looking forward and just making sure that we can get this win over tampa you know we take one game at a time one snap at a time at it first i mean just make sure zeke is on point you know Dak is reading the reads reading the defense and making the right decisions that's all we can really hope for and i mean i hope to see it too because i really want to see a high scoring game from them coming up i agree um Key to victory for me for them is when they pass the ball to Zeke and when they let Zeke run the ball. When yeah. he is the main focal point, it opens everyone else up. Now, I have to ask you one thing. I understand the Dak criticism from last year. He was very inaccurate. He was kind of at happy feet. He wasn't the same guy we saw his rookie year. He has the same criticisms this year, and I don't see it as much. Yes, last game, was he great? No, but he was still pretty accurate. He threw only one pick. No one was getting open for him. He had over, he had like, I think, 206 yards. His percentage was good. And the week before, he was like 44 or 52 for 400-plus yards, three touchdowns. What more can he do in order to prove that he is not a flake of a quarterback? I mean, I feel like the first year he came out was just like how Mark Sanchez was for the Jets. I mean – you know, he came out super, super strong. You know, well, Dak they, actually passed the ball. They didn't let Sanchez throw the ball more than 20 times. <laughs> yeah, they, they knew he was bad. But, I mean, you, you get where I'm coming <laughs> from. I mean, he, he was just that first, that first time out on the field, you know, taking – being that starter. And, I mean, it's exactly what we needed, you know, coming back last season. He hit, you're right, all the kind of shame from him, you know, playing horrible. And, I mean, it started out like that this season. I mean, again, coming from these, these past couple wins, you know, letting Zeke take control, that's exactly, and you're right. I mean, that's where they need, that's how they need to start. And they got Amari Cooper now. I mean, that's another. Who's been that's worth a, his weight in gold. Oh my gosh. Yes, he has an excellent trade and just kind of pick up for us too. So, yeah, I mean, forget about that first rounder. Who cares yes. with the way Cooper's so, playing? <laughs> if we can get Zeke going, you know, early on, get that play action going, just make sure we get Amari Cooper down the road or quick slants. I mean, just get the ball moving. That way we can get scoring. I mean, that's all it comes down to, really. Now, assuming you get into the playoffs, you are you won't get a first round bye. You're not in that position, but you will play week one, wild card weekend. Who scares you the most to see in the first round? Oh, let's see. Who are we playing? I feel like the Seahawks have a chance at being there. Um, 
Uh, it won't be the Rams. It won't be the Saints. They're going to be two, top two. Seahawks will come out of the West. And i uh, trying to think who else might be there. Yeah, I'm bringing it up right now. So it shows Vikings, Bears, or Seahawks <clears throat> as of right now. Viking Bears. So, okay. So out of those three, who scares you the most? Probably the Bears. Why? I mean, I haven't seen much of their games, but I mean, just looking from their record and I mean, they've always been not a top notch team itself, but I mean, (laughs) just seeing how they play, I could definitely see them kind of giving us the most struggle. Seahawks might give us a struggle too, just because of who they are. Um, Russell Wilson, he's another great high IQ player to himself. I mean, he can do things with that football that, you know, not an average quarterback can do. I hate Russell Wilson. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, and he's a small dude too. So, I mean, you know, just seeing that, just seeing it come from a smaller quarterback, because I mean, most of your quarterbacks are pretty tall. I mean, already, so they can see above everybody, but I mean, given from him, I mean, he could probably give us a lot of, a lot of struggle too, just cause he's real mobile with the, with the ball too. He can also move and, in between our defense so that would probably be give us another struggle there yeah i see it being the seahawks i think just i don't know it's something about the seahawks have something started right now and if they can get into the playoffs they're going to be a tough out i think they're a team that nobody would want to see in the first round but you'll more than likely get them at home which will be in your benefit completely oh yeah but all right buddy that just about wraps it up here for the sports opinions podcast with my man Kenny Martinez, Spurs and Cowboys mega fan. And if you had to notice, all around knowledgeable in basketball and football. Kenny, this was a friggin' blast, man. Cool. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me on and uh, look forward to the, ne- to the next time. Absolutely. Again, do you want to give them uh, your Twitch plug, anything like that? Yeah. So, I mean, any gamers that are kind of following along, I'm going to jump on Twitch on uh, Fortnite a little bit later. We've got a solo cup going on. So, I mean, going to try to get some high points and get some high scores and high kills out there. So, if you want to come watch, check it out. It's going to be twitch.com forward slash chaotic mind 1013 hey, awesome awesome again and i'm alex cuesta host of the sports opinions podcast find me on twitter and instagram at a underscore cuesta 30 find sports opinions on twitter at sports opinion 30 instagram sports opinions 30 visit the facebook page and you can find this podcast on virtually anywhere you can find a podcast spotify iHeartRadio. Tune in, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spreaker, YouTube, goes on and on, Stitcher. Find it anywhere you can find one of those. And that's generally it, everybody. Have a great time. Kenny, thanks again for coming on, everybody. Have a good one.